Well, good morning, everybody, again. Um, what uh, an interesting context for meeting as the church, right? Um, but I am so glad and grateful that we can, in fact, come together. And that um, we're getting a phone call, by the way. <laughs> Who knows? We're trying to stay in contact with everybody. Um, but I want to um, just bring a word of welcome to you again and um, an expression from my heart. I got my phone with me just in case any emergencies come up in the middle of our experience. It's kind of like how we have to be virtually, have to be flexible, right? We have to adapt. We, and we're having to adapt in so many ways. We got to wing it a little bit, don't we? Um, and so I just uh, want to say to you, God bless you, I love you, and God loves you, and we're in this together, okay? Um, and so I, I share that with you, I want to say grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. In our uh, passage from Acts that we heard read today, by the way, I'm doing a little bit of a going off script. We've had a series for the season of Lent um, on everyday rhythms for gospel living. And it's very pertinent for what we're experiencing uh, today, but I'm gonna focus a little bit differently today on the nature of our um, current circumstances and how they reflect the experience of Christians in the New Testament. And so we'll probably come back <laughs> to our series on everyday rhythms. Uh, as we proceed, but I'm going to start with this story from the Gospel of Acts today. The Christians were in this moment, in, in this spot in Acts 8, where up to that point, they had all been huddled together in Jerusalem out of fear. You may remember the story of the Pentecost you have thousands of people coming to faith and they're all gathering and they're trying to figure out this whole new way of life and how you include everybody, right? How you have enough food for everybody, how you um, minister to everybody, how you equip everybody to be the church. And, and yet at that point, they had still just been there in Jerusalem. Until in chapter seven, the end of chapter seven of the book of Acts, we have the story of the first martyr, Stephen, who shared his expression of the Word of God, the story of Jesus, pointing it out to many of the religious leaders, and then they became angry and they stoned him, and Stephen was the first martyr. He died sharing his faith. And it was at that moment, that moment when a big major persecution in Jerusalem began against the church. And so what we hear in Acts 8, 1, let's see if we have that up here. Um, come back to that. In Acts 8, 1, that day, a severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Now, you may remember that Jesus had said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, um, this was chapter 8, verse 1. Go back to chapter 1, verse 8, and you have Jesus' prediction of what's going to happen in the church, and Jesus says, you will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And if you can imagine, this is a group of, of, of men and followers of Jesus around them who had been very, very localized in their experience, right? Like, like se several of them were just they were fishermen. They never left the, the, the lake shore. That was their life. They, they, they had never been outside of Judea. Maybe they went to Jerusalem every once in a while, right, for a festival. But it was very local kind of an experience. And so for Jesus to say, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth for this ordinary group of people, you can imagine that was like mind blowing. And so it took until, I don't know how long it was, months maybe, a year maybe, 
until this started to expand and there's this intense experience going on and the pressure against the church just became so intense and the persecution began that we hear that all of the Christians who were there began, became scattered, scattered in throughout Judea and Samaria. Okay, so it's beginning. What Jesus predicted in Acts 1 is, is beginning now in Judea and Samaria. And that's all the way out to like foreign territory, Samaria, right? But here's the interesting thing. And the rest of the story of Acts from this is going to be about the spreading of the gospel, the spreading of the word um, throughout all the way to the ends of the earth, the ends of the, re you know, the rest of the known world at the time. But here's what's interesting about it. It says, who was scattered at this moment? All were scattered except the apostles. Except the apostles. See, <laughs> the apostles had been through three years of training and preparation and getting to know Jesus and um, learning from his life, a way of life, for three years, right? And they had become the leaders, the respected teachers, the ones who had the authority, the spiritual authority, the ones that had the, um, they had the capability of doing all sorts of things, of leading the church. And many of these people who were now scattered were pretty new to the faith. We're pretty new to getting to know who Jesus was. And it says, it says, all were scattered except the apostles. So it wasn't the ones with the highest level of training. It wasn't the ones who were the strongest leaders, not the ones who were called to lead the movement. It was ordinary Christians like you and me. And they, it says in verse 4, then it says, now those who were scattered went from place to place proclaiming the word. The literal um, reading in the original language for proclaiming the word is where we get our uh, English word evangelism, evangelical. It's good news is what it means, good news. They went around in the good news, the word of God. So we kind of hear that, and we hear it as sort of like they went around just preaching, right? And if we have any experience of, you know, Christianity, we might think they went around and they set up shop and they brought people to, you know, gatherings of folks and they held worship services and they streamed them online. No, they didn't stream them online. Just see if you're awake. Um, no, we might think that they went about kind of creating something that was familiar, right? That was like their worship experience. But they didn't have any training. They, they, were, they were like uh, sort of uh, fresh and, and new in the new life of Christ. And all of a sudden, they were scattered and sent out to all of these places where people had never heard of Jesus before. So we can imagine that um, they might have been a little overwhelmed, right? They might have been a little bit um, sort of intimidated by this. But here's the thing. They had no choice. This just happened to them, and they had to respond. Persecution happened, and boom, all of these people were scattered, the ordinary Christians. It seems to me that God did something amazing Right? Like from the very beginning of the Christian church, from the very beginning, there was something that was so different from people's uh, religious experience and expectations that began the Christian movement. And it was that it was not based on meeting in a specific location in some sort of extravagant building like the temple, which they had been used to, led by specialized ministers who wear special clothing like a clergy collar, but even more extravagant, like all of the priestly garb. And, and it wasn't the people who had all the right words and all the right rituals. Up till that point, 
They'd been huddled in Jerusalem in fear, and now, boom, they become accidental missionaries. Accidental missionaries. Can you say that with me? Accidental missionaries. So, I'm going to think for a moment for us about the situation that we're in right now. Life in a pandemic. We have now been thrust into a situation where we have a shared experience with all humanity, right? It's different, for sure, than the persecution of the early church. It's not only Christians who are, have, who are being scattered into their own homes, right? It's the whole world. It's all human beings, really, are going through this. Um, and yet, there is something that has continuity with that experience. They, we, they were scattered out in many different places. We hear in the Gospel of John, Jesus predicting what will happen for the disciples when he dies and when he's arrested, that they would be scattered into their own homes. Boy, has that happened to us now. Amen? And we, we have no choice but to adapt. We have no choice but to say, okay, God, how are we going to do this because this is our circumstances. Please show up for us in the way that we know and trust that you do and have promised. We can't rely on gathering together in a church building to be the church. We can't rely on the trained leaders. I mean, yes, okay, every once in a while we can do a live stream and everybody can listen in. Praise the Lord, we have the ability to do that. But for your daily life, you can't rely. I can't even come over and visit you. I've been on the phone with some of our elder members. I cannot go visit them in person. It would, it would threaten their life. So we have to adapt how we connect. We can't rely on the institutional structures that we're used to to practice our faith. We have been dispersed. That's one of the words for scattered in these two Passages. We have been scattered. The word, both of them, in John and in Acts, come from the language of agriculture. So to scatter, like to scatter seed. That's the image that's underlying both of these passages. The Christians have been scattered. The disciples were going to be scattered, and the Christians now are scattered all throughout Jerusalem and Judea like seed in fertile land for something to grow. Now, it may seem that we're, as we're scattered into our own homes, um, that we may not have any way to grow, right? Or anything to do. Like, what could we possibly do? We might be asking that question um, how can we respond? We've been forced into having to have some in ingenuity, right? Some innovation. We, Jim and I were talking about this, you know, like we've dreamed about having a live stream for our service. And I thought, there's no way we're gonna do that because the technology is pretty intense, it's gonna cost a lot of money, and it's gonna take a lot of time. And so maybe someday in the distant future, we'll get around to it. Boom, it's here. So the situation of necessity is breeding the innovation, right? Necessity breeds innovation. Can you say that with me? Necessity breeds innovation. And I bet if you look all around you, right? It's not just in the gathered function of the church to do a live stream where we're seeing this happen, right? Necessity is breeding innovation for all of us as we are the scattered church. And this may be, on the one hand, just to survive, right? Like. Okay, how do we get the message out? We're starting to realize more and more what's happening in our common experience. We're noticing more about what's going on in the lives of our neighbors. We're realizing who is really, really vulnerable among us. We're getting a sense of really tuned in on um, who has needs. And this is across the globe. We're learning more. Probably maybe you've heard more about the names of countries maybe you've never heard before when you say there's a spread of the coronavirus in such and such country. But we're also finding this out in our own daily lives, right? Like what are the true needs? What comes out when we are pressed? 
when we are stressed, and we're in a situation of major stress and crisis, really, in our world today. But I want to give you hope today. I want to give you hope, people of God. I want to let you know that it has been from the foundation of the church and from even before that, all throughout the Old Testament and the story of God, it has been that God uses situations such as this to spread the message, to spread the good news, like scattering seed for the Word of God to take root and grow in the world. And I believe that God is going to use this present circumstance to multiply the message of Jesus in the world. I've already seen it happen. I know there's people who, last week, I'm sure they are there today, who were logging in and checking in with us from afar. A couple of our moms, um, but other people who are in the neighborhood maybe who haven't worshipped with us in a while. The message is spreading, right? The capacity right now is shifting, and it's happening right now. If you're coming from somewhere else, uh, maybe you've never been to worship here, or you're logging in from somewhere. Would you check in either on Facebook or one of the things, or send me a text message if you have my name. Let someone know, because we want to check in with you. This is an amazing thing that God is doing in the midst of this crisis. Multiplying the good news, because we have all become accidental missionaries. Let me hear you say, accidental missionaries. Accidental missionaries. Comes from being sent out into the world, probably before we feel ready, right? Before we feel ready and being forced to learn what is uncomfortable like how to adapt like how to log on to zoom <laughs> like uh, how to do um, communication how, how to how do I talk like you hear about the story of the people who are wanting to visit their elder loved ones in a nursing home they can't and so we call them on the phone and then sit outside right and listen um, and talk through the window or something we're learning a ton. And what I want to say to you today is that our experience of church, even though it's different, right? Even like for those first Christians, even though it's different, is no less church than it was two weeks ago when we were gathered here physically together. Okay? This is, this is, scattered church is church too. Can you say that? Scattered church is church too. The forced scattering of God's people by influences outside of their control is the way, people of God, in the scriptures that God has always used to strengthen and grow and deepen the church's life and mission and ministry. Even using the very evil intentions and influences in the world against them to multiply the kingdom of God. Now, those first accidental missionaries, <laughs> uh, they were, just think about this, like, they were in real danger. And there's real danger for us too, right? And this is no joke. We've been reading about it, been trying to get our minds around it, it's overwhelming. I'm often stressed out uh, and have headaches. <laughs> But my heart is not crushed, right? My spirit is not crushed because I believe in a God who, like Jesus says in this passage from John 16, who has already overcome the world through his death. We know there's nothing we need to fear. And I, I see that for the first Christians, right? They were sent out, they didn't have the training, but they were still called, as Jesus had told the apostles, and I'm sure they've heard this over and over again, to be the church. Be the church, to be salt and to be light, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That, that phrase of proclaiming the word or um, evangelizing the word, it doesn't just mean um, preaching from the pulpit, right? I want to make this real clear, real simple for you today, okay? Some of our kids out there, um, are, well, all of our kids out there are going to be having to adapt and learn how to be in an online school, right? Um, and we're already stir-crazy. And we're already kind of going, how in the world are we going to do this? Um, but I want to get back to basics, okay? There's a, there's a little thing 
that, that we used to, this was back in my day when I was a kid going to school. We had this little thing called show and tell. Anybody ever did show and tell? All right? Um, so you had something that you liked, you know, and you brought and you told the story about it. And you showed people so they could see for themselves. Right? Simple. Simple. You could do that. Um, we, could, we could have show and tell sessions <laughs> about the things that we're learning. Uh, you could do that for your classroom technology. I don't know how the teachers are going to respond. But for the sake of the church, we can make this really simple. To be in the church, even while we are accidental missionaries, is all we got to know how to do is show and tell. I learned that when I was in kindergarten. No, probably preschool. <laughs> show and tell. That's all you got to do. You don't have to have the theological training. You don't have to have all the right words. You don't have to have all the right rituals. You just got to be the church and people of God. Listen, this is what Jesus was saying to his disciples when they, he was about to go to the cross. It's John 16. It's his last conversation with them. He's telling them, listen, you used to pray and, and, and I would be the mediator for you, but now you have a direct connection to God because you have believed that I came from God and so the Father loves you. So, so now you have a direct connection with God. You don't have to go even directly through Jesus because Jesus is connected to the Father and you have a direct line of connection to the Father through the Holy Spirit. You are a part of the family of God. So nothing can separate you from that life of God, no matter how far scattered we are. And so here's what I want to do um, in the upcoming week, okay? And maybe this goes for a while longer. Um, it, I wanted to put this on here. By the way, this is the uh, statement on our sign, spread the word, not the virus, okay? And we're trying to get a sense that we actually have some agency. We actually have some, we're not powerless. We have a God who gives power to the powerless. It's because he is with us and in us. And so whatever situation, you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like you're alone, you're not. Okay? Um, we are called. And you are gifted. Right now, you don't have to go through any other extra special. Right now, where you are, with what you have, because you already have everything you need to be the accidental, not so accidental now, intentional missionary, God has called you to be. Amen? Amen? And so what I want to ask us to do is to, you know, we've been looking for symptoms. <laughs> If you got used to looking for symptoms, we're looking for the cough, and we're looking for the fever, and we're looking, okay, while we're looking for symptoms, because we're getting used to looking for the symptoms, I want you to start looking for the symptoms of the kingdom of God growing, okay? Look for the symptoms of the kingdom of God. In that passage from the Gospel of John, these are things that we hear are going to come because the, the Word of God has been planted in our hearts. These are the things Jesus says. You have now intimacy and direct connection with God the Father. You are loved. You are loved. Where do you see that happening? Um, you will receive what you pray for. That's what Jesus says. Um, you will have belief. You will never be alone. Jesus does this so that we can have peace. You will have peace in the midst of trial and persecution. He says, take courage and be bold. You will have courage and you will have boldness. And finally, this is, the, this is great, this is great. In both this passage and in Acts 8, okay? Jesus says, I do this so that you will have joy. Can I hear you say joy? Joy. And then he says, no one will take your joy from you. No one will take your joy from you. Physical distancing cannot take your joy from you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. And we can share the joy. We can spread the joy, not the virus. We can spread the word, not the virus. Four times in this passage, it says the word joy and rejoice. And then in, eight, in Acts 8, when Philip has shared, he's shown and told. He didn't know. He's like, holy smokes, me? Me, Jesus, go to Samaria? This foreign place, I've never been there, I'm not sure I know the language very well, and I'm supposed to be, like, called to do something new? 
he experienced, says the city rejoiced. The city experienced joy. So here's what I want to ask you guys to do now, okay? Look for these things and then post them on hashtags if you can. On Facebook, okay? Um, or Twitter if you use that, or Instagram. I'll try to get our Twitter and Instagram and Facebook up. And we're going to um, use these hashtags. Look for where you see us being the church, okay? Where you see us being... We lost it. Oh, we lost the feed? The yep. live stream is up too. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Looking for symptoms. <laughs> All right. Uh, what I want to ask you to do is to look for ways that you see uh, people, yourself included, being the church. How do you see? Uh, how do you see people around you, people in our congregation? Maybe it's online. People in the world, or how are you doing it yourself, so that we can encourage each other as the church that we can do this and that God is with us. And this is what you can look for because we have a mission up here. You can't see it, but it's our mission statement, and it says. We put Jesus' way of life into practice by encountering God, loving one another, and reaching the world. Can you do that with me? Encounter God, love one another, reach the world. And we have five values that we've stated that are ways that we can do that, right? In the world, what we're going to see is social isolation. But what are we called to? We're called a radical hospitality. We can do that. We can innovate on that, even though we have to keep physical distance. Um, let's see. In the world, there's a worship of the economy, right? There's a worship of materialism. There's a worship of individualism. But we are called to passionate worship of the King of Heaven. Amen? Amen. Okay? In the world, there's a deconstruction of any kind of, of um, meaning in our lives, right? There's, there's a deconstruction of any sort of trust or faith in people or of, um, of God, right? But we are called to intentional faith development as a church. In the world, <clears throat> there's a sense of um, purposelessness, right? Like, what do you have, where do you find something to do? Like, especially in this time, all I can do is sit at home. No, we are called to risk-taking mission and service. Risk-taking mission and service. It doesn't mean not be smart and don't be wise. It means follow the directions for physical distancing, care for each other. That's a way to love the neighbor. But there's ways that we need to be present for one another. Be present for one another. If you've seen this, put it up there. Hashtag be the church. Hashtag accidental missionaries. And finally, in the world, we see scarcity. There's not enough. I gotta take it all for myself because everybody's a threat, right? Everything's hoarded. There's no toilet paper. There's no, there's no wipes. Um, they're running out of diapers. There's nothing on the shelves that people want. You can't get it delivered to you. With all kinds of things, there's not enough. But you know what? If the generosity of the hearts of the people of God and the church would rise up and be the church, there would be enough for all because God's already given us enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the, the world is about hoarding and greed, but we're called to extravagant generosity. Be the church. Can I hear you say, be the church? Be the church. Accidental missionaries. Accidental missionaries. We can do that. Let's pray. God of grace, thank you for leading us through all of the experiences that we have as human beings. You give us hope that we can be the church regardless of our location, regardless of what's happening in the world around us. <clears throat> it was for the early Christians, it's been that way throughout history, that you use these times to multiply the message to plant the seed of God in our hearts so as we're scattered, we're scattered like seed and the kingdom DNA begins to take root in our lives more and more as well as being spread and multiply those who follow you and love you. We pray that you would use us, you would increase our hope, increase our joy that nothing can take away from us. We thank you and in your name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. 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 We're going to sing.